Hi everyone and welcome to this powerful interview series, Vagina Pussy Vulva, Lifting Taboos of Female Sexuality, Power and Wisdom. I'm your host, Mangala Holland, and I specialize in giving those of you who identify as female and vulva owners tools to empower yourselves in your sexuality, self-love and orgasmic confidence. And during this series, you're going to discover really practical tools and advice to empower you to show up with confidence in your body and your sexuality and to be unapologetically authentic and to let go of shame and self-sabotage so that you can access the deeper wisdom, power, authenticity and mystery of your amazing body. And I'm so excited to be sharing this wisdom from all of these incredible guest experts. All of these conversations have been real, they've been raw, we're really just going <laughs> with where the energy is. And um, it's my honor and delight to introduce you to the amazing Betty Martin. Welcome, Betty. Thank you. Thank you. That was quite an inspiring intro. <laughs> That's where we're going? Hell yeah, let's go there. <laughs> <laughs> oh, thank you. Yeah, and it's really lovely. What I love is that um, everybody who's participated, the responses when I've invited them, they've just been like, I can really feel this in my body. Hell yes, I'm in. So there's mm -hmm. there's definitely some juice in this. So yeah. Um, so I'm just going to introduce you to our audience in case anybody's not come across your work. So Betty is the developer of the amazing tool, The Wheel of Consent. And Betty has had her hands on people professionally for 40 years, some of it legal, some of it questionable, 30 years as a chiropractor, and then 15 years as a certified surrogate partner and somatic sex educator. These days, her passion is in training other hands-on practitioners in consent skills and how to teach their clients empowered choice so they can stop doing what they think they're supposed to do and start doing what it is they want to do. And her class for practitioners is called Like a Pro and it has taken it all over the world. Her book, which has just been released, is The Art of Receiving and Giving, The Wheel of Consent. Wow, awesome. <laughs> <laughs> and... Um, the reason I really wanted to have this conversation with you, Betty, is, um, as I, we've just kind of discussed in this before I hit record, is that for so many of us, a lot of the clients I work with, when we start to work on sexuality and pleasure and reconnecting in with the body, a lot of times um, they'll kind of realize where boundaries have been overridden um, or where they said yes when it wasn't a full yes or really a, a hell yes you know and we mm -hmm. start to realize all these different layers um, and it can have a big impact and um, one thing I really love in your bio there is when you said the, the words empowered choice and I feel like that's a really good place to start with this conversation so yeah can you explain to us what you mean by empowered choice wow sure i think i think um power there's really kind of two kinds of power one is the ability to choose what happens to you or or to choose what doesn't happen to you mm -hmm. so you have the you are empowered around your body for example and the other kind of power is the ability to influence or affect someone else or something else. Mm. So, you know, we have the power of the vote. We have the power of the protest march to, you know, to mm -hmm. hopefully make changes elsewhere. And we have the power to influence other people's actions. Mm. It varies how much, but we do have some. So I think empowered means that we notice that power we we and we have the skills to exercise that power it's one thing to, to know okay well you know i have a choice about what happens to me i guess you know but having the skill to say yes or no or move your hand that's a different thing entirely mm -hmm. and that's what that's what the empowered that's where the empowered piece comes in um and of course, we could also be in situations where we actually don't have a choice and that's mm. never fun. Mm. Um, but, or we have, uh, we have a, you know, we technically could have a choice, but we're being coerced or pressured or it's dangerous or something like that. Mm. In which case, do you have a choice? No, nah, not really. Mm. Yeah. Mm. 
Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. yeah. And I can think of situations, even, you know, like not in the bedroom, I'm thinking cases like in workshop scenarios and stuff I've been in in the past where everybody's going crazy oh. in something. And the, the option is said at the beginning, if you'd rather sit out, you can, you can always say no. And it's right. It's not it, enough. It's not yeah. enough because to, to find the courage to put your hand up and be the only one when everyone else seems to be enjoying it can be yeah is yeah yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. workshops are really awful for that because <clears throat> because you have not only do you have your your sort of habitual going along with mm -hmm. habit which we all do to some degree mm -hmm then you have everybody else who's seemingly enjoying it. So what's wrong with me? Why mm -hmm. can't I enjoy it? You know? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. It's said as if, Oh, <clears throat> you can keep your clothes on if you want. Yeah. Well, <laughs> the implication is if you are not getting naked, you're just a loser, you know? So of course, you know, yeah. Or you're blocked, or there's something wrong. Yeah, with you. something, yeah, you're not learning how to surrender. Oh my yeah. god! <laughs> yeah. What what I'm learning is, or you know, it's not that I need to learn to surrender. And I've had people ask me this, like, why can't I? The one person asked me this. This was at a workshop at a conference. I want to access the divine feminine in me. And I said, what does that mean? She said, hmm. well, I want to not have to be in control and be able to surrender more. And I said, so you want to be able to get better at going along with stuff that you don't like? <laughs> <laughs> Is that what you want? <laughs> like, oh, you know, what, what people need to learn is not how to surrender, it's how to be in charge of mm -hmm. themselves, of their boundaries and of what they want and what they don't want. Mm. And when you are completely confident that you do have a choice about how you're touched and what happens to you, then you automatically relax. It's mm. automatic. Mm. If you're not relaxed, then something in you, you have your antenna up for, uh oh, what's gonna happen next? Mm -hmm. But if you have the skill to say stop or move or slow down or do this other thing, mm. and the degree that you have confidence in that skill, then the relaxing is automatic and, and surrender becomes easy mm -hmm. within the limits that you have decided. Mm -hmm. So it's not, why can't I surrender? It's Within what particular limits does it sound fun to surrender? Mm. Oh, I can surrender my left foot. Hell yeah, that's easy. Yeah. But surrender all of me? No. <laughs> yeah. So once you know that you have that limit, okay, you can have my left foot, then you relax because, yeah, it's just your left foot. Mm. Mm. So we have to kind of have it backwards. Which yeah. So often comes up in those kinds of workshop situations and mm. in sessions and on dates I mean and I love that I love what you're saying like when you're in charge of your own boundaries I mean that's where you can really feel the comfort and the safety yeah to be able yeah. to to relax and let go and to enjoy yeah. Yeah. enjoy that because as you say that part of your your brain can calm down, sure. your body can relax, you're not on red yeah. alert looking for danger. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 And that's so incredible. And that's a skill that's learned. So I don't mm. know that, I think we're, we're kind of born with it, but we unlearn it very quickly as small children mm. because mm. stuff happens to us. And I mean, it's just part of being a child. Stuff happens that you don't like. And mm -hmm some degree you have to learn how to go along with it mm. and so we get very good at going along with stuff that we don't like and then we think it's normal yeah yeah and many of us have been and, conditioned from an early age haven't yes. we, to keep people yeah. happy i think yeah yeah i think it's particularly true for vulva owners mm -hmm. those of us who are raised as girls we 
like that's a skill that we have to go along with stuff and mm -hmm. i mean i think i think penis owners also have that skill in different ways and it varies by the person but i think for vulva owners it's pretty endemic that we and and then we're taught that our job in sex is to go along and make our bodies available mm. at least you know i grew up in the 1950s and that was what female sexuality was yeah. it's just you know you spread your legs and you go along and you moan and groan so that they think that you like it like mm. <laughs> and learning that that wasn't the case was a huge revelation for me mm. and i don't think i really learned that until my mid 40s or so that mm -hmm. oh wait a minute this belongs to me this body belongs to me my eroticism belongs to me oh well now what do i want to do with it mm -hmm. that was a complete wake up for me wow wow amazing wow yeah. So I'd love to ask you to um, just in simple words that you can just to kind of give us the breakdown what what the wheel of consent kind of the if you can explain kind of the quadrants or just yeah. how it can yeah. be used as a framework to help people start to understand their boundaries and to to yeah. to navigate this world because you know as yeah. we said like the conditioning is one thing and then for many of us i'm sure i i have a long history when i was in my 20s and a lot of my 30s of just having lots of drunken exploits and not not really in a position yeah. to be making empowered right. choices <laughs> yeah. yeah and right. then having to clear all that out at a later point and do the, the inner healing work behind it so yeah mm. yeah the 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 wheel of consent is a model of how touch agreements fit together. And it's also a practice. Mm. It's a model of, I can, if I'm putting my hands on you, is it for you or is it for me? Mm. And what's the difference and why does it matter? That's essentially what it's about. Mm. I can put my hands on you for you. I can put my hands on you for me. And, and I need to be able to tell the difference. Mm. And likewise, you could put your hands on me for me, you could put your hands on me for you. So that creates four different combinations, uh, which kind of fit into quadrants. Mm. And that's the wheel. Mm. So, um, so the, the kind of overarching question of the wheel is who is it for? Mm. And once you start to experiment with it, you drive yourself crazy with that question because <laughs> you'll find that you ask it, you know, your, your, your mom is bringing over some soup. Well, who's it for? Is it for me? Is it for her? Is she doing it for her? And uh, you know, I'm wanting to help you do something. Am I doing it? Is that for me to feel good or is it actually for you? And if it's for you, I need to find out what you want. Mm -hmm. Otherwise it's not really for you. Is it? Mm -hmm. So, um, so yeah, once you start asking yourself that question, it drive you crazy. Mm -hmm. um, so that's the wheel. The, the practice of the wheel involves taking turns so that you take receiving and giving apart. Mm -hmm. It doesn't mean that you have to live your life this way, but as a practice, you can have experiences when it's all about you that are completely different than the experiences you have when it's all about the other person. Mm -hmm. And, and you, and when you take them apart, you, you have experiences that are just available no other way. Mm. Um, does that mean you want to live your life that way? No, I don't. Mm -hmm. uh, but, um, but it's, it's a practice and you, you find out things about yourself and you develop skills and you, and you notice things that you didn't notice before. Mm, mm. wow yeah oh, and you can see it on my website there's free yeah. videos and, there, yeah yeah there's so many videos on your website that are amazing that really help <laughs> break this down for yeah. people and uh, what i love about this approach is 
it really gives people practical tools to to kind of practice this communication aspect because I think that's where mm -hmm. so many people get stuck. Mm -hmm. um, particularly, I've seen a lot in long term relationships where one partner starts wanting to <laughs> explore new things or has been feeling dissatisfied and and then mm -hmm. and it's like, well, how do I communicate this to my partner? Having mm -hmm. a framework like this to be able to say, okay, for so many yeah. minutes, yeah. what's going to give, yeah. what's going to receive, can be yeah, super yeah, helpful. It's a it's a great framework for experimenting mm. because you know, may I, you know, nibble your ear for three minutes, or may I, you know, explore your kneecap for three minutes, or will you spank me for five minutes? Mm -hmm. You know, it, by cr creating a time limit mm -hmm. and being very specific about what's going to happen, it, it's a great container for experimenting. You find all kinds of things that turned out to be fun that you had never thought of before. Mm -hmm. Mm, and just working that muscle of asking for what yeah <laughs> what you yeah. what you want yeah. Yeah. yeah which is essentially i mean there are many ways to ask for what you want but essentially they boil down to two it's may i or will you mm. pretty much everything you can ask for is going to fall in one of those mm -hmm. it's either something that i want to do i'm going to say may i or it's something i want you to do Mm. which I'll say, will you? Mm. And so once that sort of, once the dust settles around, oh yeah, it's basically these two things. Yeah. Then you start to notice where in my life do I want people to do something and I'm not saying, will you? Mm. I'm thinking or, you know, all kinds of things that we do. Yeah. And so, yeah, the applications for this, it's not just in the bedroom, is it? It's, no, not it's at all. every area of life. Yeah. yeah. It's every area of life. Yeah. 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 Is a, is a, a, a diagram of really pretty much all human interaction or many, many, the fundamentals of human interaction doesn't mm. describe every interaction. Thank goodness. Mm, mm. But but I, I wanted to go back to it, particularly in speaking to women and vulva owners that that a real key thing here that people notice as they explore the wheel of consent is the difference in being touched. You know, I'm being touched. Someone someone's hand is on stroking my body or on my vulva or something, and my training is that it's for the other person's pleasure. My mm -hmm. body is for their pleasure. And that could be true if that's what our agreement is. Mm -hmm. But there's something different to be gained when they're touching me exactly the way I want and exactly the way I have asked. And I am completely in charge of exactly where their hand is, how fast it's moving, how, what the, you know, kind of stroke or whatever is, that's a completely different experience. And that experience is life changing. Mm -hmm. And I've had, so, and it was for me, this was in my mid forties, it was for me. And it, I've seen it be true for so many people of all genders and all genital configurations, mm -hmm. but I think it's very, very common in vulva owners that um, when they discovered that, oh, I could have it the way I wanted, tears and oh, ahas and oh my God, what have I been doing all these years? Yeah. And that, that many people don't know what it's like to be touched exactly the way they want because mm. they've never had it. Mm. I don't think I've had it, you know? Mm. So, um, yeah, so this is a big revelation for, in particular, well owners. Yeah. Oh, God, just feeling the, <laughs> just feeling yeah. that in my it's, body it's when you say it, it's, yeah, yeah. yeah. And it, and it takes, that's why I like the wheel as a practice because you know you're rolling around in bed having fun and doing your thing and 
you're you may not feel that you can be as directive or as so-called selfish mm. it's fine i mean yeah but when you set aside a time to practice this practice and okay for the next hour we're going to just explore this and i'll ask you what you want and you'll ask me what mm -hmm. i want and then we'll do that and i mean within our within our limits of course then you have okay we've agreed on this 10 minutes it's completely about me mm -hmm. so can i actually make it about me mm -hmm. do i know how to do that mm -hmm. most of us don't really know how to do that mm -hmm. and um so but because you've set aside this 10 minutes where you've agreed okay this is all about me now you have some sort of permission to get mm -hmm. completely directive and completely selfish about it mm -hmm. and, um, uh, and so that's why I recommend playing with it as a practice. Because mm. this is where you really get to fine tune the, <laughs> the mm -hmm. slower, firmer, whatever it is yeah. that yeah. you need. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. I worked with somebody who I worked with a couple, this is a while ago, and we spent over an hour just with him massaging her hand and her arm mm -hmm. while she was calibrating and giving him yeah. feedback as to yeah. how slow she needed it and yeah. it, it they've been together many 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 years like decades yeah. and yeah. just seeing the penny drop for him when he finally yeah understood what that slow and she's like yes <laughs> yeah. it was so beautiful it was a real yeah. connection point just took them into a, a beautiful heart space yeah um, yeah it was just something really powerful to yeah. witness yeah and those ahas are very difficult without some kind of container like you're describing mm -hmm. they're not really likely to happen in the bedroom as you yeah. noticed but they've been there together you know decades yeah like yeah 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 that's a beautiful story mm, mm. and what advice would you give to somebody who perhaps is you know really wanting to explore this and they're, they're kind of like well where do i start with my partner how do i get them on board with with this thing <laughs> what mm -hmm. what would you suggest uh, ask for what you want which is maybe for example mm -hmm. i really want to practice this thing will you watch this five minute video with me and let's and let's try it mm. um yeah i mean there there's a there's a video on the website and on youtube called the three minute game where mm. i take people through it and um just asking each other what you want you're taking turns asking each other what you want mm. and will sometimes people say no yes they will Mm -hmm. And I, I don't have any, any um, secrets for that other than it can sometimes help to ask for something that you want that is, that you imagine will be fairly easy. Mm -hmm. what, what you want to do is establish that taking turns is normal. Mm -hmm. That's what you want to do. <laughs> And in order to do that, you have to take the risk first and ask for what you want. Mm. You can't start by trying to give because it's a little suspect because it's not actually true anyway. Mm -hmm. Like what's really true is that you want to turn. Mm -hmm. So, you know, oh, honey, would you rub my feet for five minutes and then I'll do whatever you want for five minutes. Mm. Or would you, um, uh, yeah, scratch my back for three minutes and I'll do whatever you want for three minutes mm. and, and stick and set the timer. Yeah. Because if you go over, then you have just broken your trust. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 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 And the time is, is a really important piece in creating that. Mm -hmm. You say that trust, that safety, that mm -hmm. there's a start point, a middle and an end point yeah. so that you can both relax into it. Mm. Yeah. Mm. Um, so that's what I recommend if you don't, if you don't have an agreement to try this experiment. Mm. 
Mm. And what about if you're interacting with somebody new, for example? Oh, it's been a while. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not sure you want to take dating advice from someone <laughs> my age. Um, well, ideally, and I realize this doesn't always happen. Ideally, you want to have a conversation before mm. you ever get in the bedroom. Mm. Of course you want, you need to have a conversation about STDs. You need to have a conversation about health or other concerns, or, you know, my right knee doesn't bend all the way. So don't flip me over that way yeah. or, you know, um, what kinds of things interest you or what kind of things are a no-go mm. you know i mean ideally this is happening before you get to the bedroom yeah because you can think better before mm -hmm. you start getting turned on yes <laughs> and um for, and for another you may find out that this person is not as cute as you thought they were mm -hmm. if they can't communicate and don't know what they want and suddenly they're really not as cute as you thought they were when you met them better you know? to find that out beforehand yeah. yes better to find that out before <laughs> yeah um, mm. but still if you're if you're in the bedroom rolling around i um <laughs> i would would this sounds terrible probably i would want to put up a few test bumps mm -hmm. and see you know if i if I take your hand and hold it still where it is or mm -hmm. move it, how are you going to react to that? If that gets you huffy, then we ain't going anywhere else. Mm. Like we, I'm not, we're not going anywhere else. You know? mm. um, or if you never ask me what I like, mm -hmm. that's a big red flag. Yeah. Like why would I engage with someone who doesn't care what I like? Mm -hmm. That doesn't make sense to me. Yeah. Um, and I would not like this in my twenties and thirties mm -hmm. and forties. Mm -hmm. You know, this was this was awareness that came much later for me. But I think it's coming. Younger people are getting it now mm. more so. So that's good. Mm. And what um, I've seen is in um, particularly in some of the sexuality circles, like particularly the kink scene, for example, because of the nature of that kind of play. They've got much more. Um, oh yeah, they're way way more advanced in kind of yeah. asking, expressing, clear yeah. boundaries. I mean, not always, but in in general, yeah. they they general. seem to have sure. much better practices around that than yeah than people outside think, of those scenes. I think, yeah, I think it's partly for safety reasons and mm -hmm. partly because the activity is very much about the activity. Mm -hmm. It's not about oh, I love you, I want to connect with you. Mm. Let's go into this magic mystical space where we read each other's minds. <laughs> Not so much about that. <laughs> yeah. 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 Uh, wow. Yeah, that's awesome. And what about, um, cause, cause what this gives you then when it's something that people probably have let in let the me, back. Let me, add one. Mm. let me add one thing non-verbal communication mm. of course it happens yeah and um in the in the practice of the wheel it's verbal because you mm. need to gain those skills but in real life sometimes it's not verbal mm -hmm. if i want to kiss i can go or mm -hmm. or yeah so it's it, it for some people it's very difficult to get words out yeah in which case make signals yeah or you know <laughs> you know so yeah that's perfectly fine yeah and taking someone's hand and putting it where you want it slowly and gently so that they can if they want pull it away mm. like as a question you know mm. um so there are ways to communicate that uh, are without words mm. And especially yeah. important in that is pause or stop as yeah. well. Yeah. 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 Just a stop sign or a, you know, mm. I need to take a breather. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And just, and just pausing to breathe and 
look at each other and let your body give yourself your your our bodies are constantly sending signals to us mm -hmm. uh, to our brains constant but sometimes we get to doing so fast that we can't keep up with those signals mm -hmm. and our doing gets ahead of our noticing mm -hmm. that's problematic yeah you want your noticing ahead of your doing mm -hmm. so it, if you can slow down and take a breather ah oh, okay okay yeah oh now i notice yeah i want more of that or now i notice um i'm not no, mm. you know or oh that leads me to this other thing that sounds also fun mm. you know, so you want your noticing to be ahead of your doing not your doing ahead of your noticing yeah 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 yeah, oh, I love that. That creates so much more spaciousness and the opportunity for all the parts of you to catch up <laughs> with yeah, what's going exactly. on. Yeah, exactly. yeah. yeah, yeah. Mm. yeah. That we, what were you going to say? I was going to ask you um, about more on the, the kind of the shadow side of, of this as well, because there can be times where, you know, you can feel like you're being touched or perhaps you're the one touching and you know, it's not, it doesn't feel like it's coming from a, <laughs> the, uh, a pure place, for example. You yeah, know, like, can we fuck up? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah or, yeah. you know, I'm sure we've all received touch at some point where it really felt like take energy mm -hmm. and not, not in a good way. Yeah. 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 Mm. yeah I think I, I talk about the shadows of the quadrants of the mm. wheel in a very, broadly defined i'm not i'm not a union mm. I'm just saying basically when things happen that we didn't agree to mm. or that we kind of overdo it so can someone do something to us that we didn't agree to oh of course mm. yeah happens all the time and vice versa and i think it's helpful to notice that we that all of us i don't know anyone who hasn't made mistakes or stepped over mm -hmm. someone else's boundaries yeah. in some way or other so um we can all do that and and i think we all have in different ways let our boundaries be walked over mm -hmm. because we didn't say no or we didn't say stop mm -hmm. or maybe we couldn't you mm -hmm. know? so yeah it happens all the time mm -hmm. and i think one one way that it often happens is that if I want to get my hands on you, because well, what's the difference? I have to get my hands on you, but I'm, but I don't know that that's okay to ask for, because I don't really know that such a thing exists. Then I'm going to offer to give you a massage. Mm -hmm. Well, I, I imagine many of us have been offered massages that we were like that's <laughs> yeah. creepy, you know. Yeah. Um, but then now, okay, and you, then you say, yes, you can massage my back. Well, now, is that for you or is that for me? Mm. It's not clear. Mm. And then that's where it starts. That's where we get this kind of um, feeling that we, many of us have had. We're like, that, that's, that feels creepy. And mm. we don't really know why. Mm. It's because it's not clear. Mm. If, it, if it's, I'm, my hands are on your back. If it's for you, then I'm going to go where my your hands, my hands are going to go where you want them to go. Mm -hmm. If it's for me, then with your permission, I'm just going to kind of feel you up. Hmm. That's a very different experience. <laughs> yeah. 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 And that's why it's important and helpful to get mm -hmm. clear in that what the agreement is. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. Yeah. Wow. I can really, yeah, you can really feel that the, the fuzzy area between the two mm -hmm. is where mm -hmm. that, that kind of icky feeling comes in and just yeah. something's off and I something. can't quite put. Yeah. 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 Mm. yeah. Mm. Well, you start asking yourself, who is this for? Mm -hmm. Those things will start to get much clearer. Yeah. 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 I had a, <laughs> to share. I had a, uh, an incident with my cat in my last, the place where I last lived. And she was a very traumatized kitty. And I, I became her custodian. And at first she, she just would just would not let me give her any love whatsoever. And at one point I realized 
I'm giving her all this touch for me, not for her. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I used yeah. the, the principles yeah. of the wheel with the cat and it transformed yeah. everything in our in our connection within a, a couple of weeks. So she totally wow. relaxed and let go. Yeah. And it was it was like she was a different animal. It was amazing. Yeah, so interesting. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's, yeah. it's an incredible um, different framework when we do this. I'm just curious. Um, like how we can bring this in in, in context of self-pleasure because there's boundaries with self as well and mm -hmm. really kind of how can we kind of pull things apart so we can listen more deeply to what yeah calibrating what is a real hell yes and what's a yeah. oh well, I should do my practice or yeah. I'll just yeah. go through the motions yeah right right that's a great question well, it's interesting. You you can take it apart. You, for example, my hand is on my head. Mm. I can be attentive to what it feels like in my hand to feel my hair. Mm. Feels kind of nice. I just washed it. <laughs> or I can put my attention on what it feels like on my head. Mm. And then I notice, oh, I, I want some scratching, you know? Mm. So it's, it, I don't know. I mean, you could think of it as consent. I don't really know, but, mm. but it's definitely possible to put your attention on your hand or on the part that your hand is touching. Mm. And of course, this is true when we touch our own genitals. Mm -hmm. it, an interesting experiment would be to take those apart and say spend I don't know a few minutes using your hand to explore and just what does this thing feel like like what's the texture mm. what's the shape what's the how is it change you know and just use your hand to feel and feel your elbow mm. I mean feel your wrist feel you know whatever and then then set the timer again for five minutes and be attentive only to what it feels like on your body part mm. so for example if my head i'm noticing i want some scratching so i'm gonna go with where my head wants to be scratched mm. and it may be it has enough and then i just sit still a while and maybe i want some pats you know that um yeah, that, that's an interesting experiment. I think mm -hmm. what often happens, it's, this was the case for me, and I've seen it with other people, that we think our genitals job, I mean, interesting that when you said self-pleasure, I went to genitals, but <laughs> anyway, we think that our genitals job is to give us an orgasm or get the mm -hmm. job done or, you know, like they have a job and we're going to work them. And so I'm going to do this thing so that I, have this explosion in my head. Mm -hmm. But really, I think we cut them short when we do that. I think if we understand that their job is to experience enjoyment, mm. and that's their only job. Well, there's birth and stuff like that, but for that, set that aside. <laughs> if that's their only job to experience enjoyment, then there's nowhere to go. Mm -hmm. There really is nowhere to go. So just holding your hand over them, get, getting your hand warm and holding it over them, that is really fabulous. Mm -hmm. And there's nowhere to go. Mm -hmm. And so when, we, and, and that gives us kind of permission or a, a container in which we can um, experiment with what actually does feel good, mm -hmm. which is different perhaps than what's going to get me off. Yeah. Yeah. It's a very different question and it can be difficult or it's been difficult for me on occasion, but to slow down and mm -hmm. pay attention to just what is pleasant here. Yeah. What feels lovely. Mm. And without any idea of actually getting off um yeah it, it can be hard to do but it's really worth experimenting mm. with mm. 
Absolutely. I love that. It's just taking the goal off the table and just uh, giving yourself that full permission yeah. to just yeah. enjoy what feels alive or yeah. good <laughs> or, or nice rather than, yeah. as you said, just like rather than hunting arousal or chasing mm-hmm. down an orgasm. Yeah. It, can, it could be very, very liberating. Yeah. yeah in all kinds of ways wow oh oh this is such a delicious conversation betty <laughs> <laughs> this is oh yeah oh there's so much in this it's it's so rich and i love the way you just kind of make it so simple just keep bringing it back to those two questions you know? mm-hmm. yeah 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 what a framework for living a really kind of aligned life when we can just mm. keep asking ourselves these questions again and again yeah. And again yeah 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 yeah. yeah yeah i think that would take a lot of the shoulds and a lot of the self-judgment and a lot of the inner criticism that many of us carry yeah when we when we yeah. get really clear on that mm, yeah. beautiful thank you thank you yeah yeah you're welcome Mm. so i know you've got a a really generous gift to share with our audience if you want to just tell us about that yeah sure at um bettymartins.org there's a page with a bunch of free videos and there's also a link there to my book and you can get a free um the first chapter i'm giving away free and you just sign up there and it'll Put you on our mailing list so you'll find out about the book oh. um, but both of those are on bettymartin.org that, amazing thank you that's super super generous and um yeah i'd also really direct everyone to go check out the three minute game because it's it could absolutely transform your relationship you know i've seen it happen with clients again and again and again yeah. um yeah. it's amazing stuff so yeah you can find that on youtube mm. put in three so thank you betty thank you for your time and thank you for your contribution to not just this series but to what you've brought to the to the world it it really is like you're doing amazing work and and it's great seeing the word spreading and getting out there and yeah giving giving thank you for hosting the series oh Oh, thank you. It's a, I, I yeah. see that you've enjoyed it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It does not feel like work, which is, yeah. that's when you know you're in the sweet spot, doesn't it? Yeah. <laughs> thank you. You bet.